The peer review process is an important part of the scientific method. Rigorous review of work ensures that the published material is reliable and valid. The purpose of conducting peer review in this class is twofold. First, it will help improve the quality of the literature review article you write. Second, it is an opportunity for you to participate in an activity that is crucial to the scientific profession. You will practice evaluating each other's work. This is actually harder than it seems. How do you know what's important? What criteria should you use? You will also learn how to respond to a peer review. To be honest, sometimes an emotional response to a review is often quite natural. Maybe you feel the review is a personal attack, or you don't understand how the reviewer could be confused since you worked so hard. However, once some time has passed, it is helpful to take an objective and logical approach to responding to your peers' critique. Often, your peers' comments help make your work better, clearer, more precise. Occasionally, after critically thinking about it, you still may disagree with the reviewer's comment. This is acceptable as long as your argument against the comment is based in logic or supported by evidence. In science, however, we peril if all reviewers' comments are ignored. If you've never participated in peer review, then you may be wondering how best to provide constructive criticism of your colleague's work. In my experience, some of the best reviews I've gotten start out by stating the strengths of my work. It's good to know you're doing some things well. Then, as a reviewer, you'll want to focus on things that aren't clear to you. It's normal to have some sections of your work not be as clear as they could be. Peer review is helpful in identifying these sections. A reviewer should also make suggestions for how the writing can be polished. Comments should be an honest reflection of the reviewer's judgment of the work, but not a personal attack of the author. Finally, be as detailed as possible to help guide the author. Here are a few examples of comments you might make that highlight the author's strengths. The style of the writing is clear and concise. Good job of explaining cis regulatory elements. I feel that I now can explain what they are too. The author does a good job of comparing and contrasting the role of FGF signaling to other morphogens. Notice that what these comments have in common is that they are specific. For the purpose of this class, it doesn't hurt to throw in encouraging phrases like good job. Although in the real world of peer review, there isn't much of this. Ask for clarification. Be specific with these types of comments as that will be most helpful to the author. The sample comments here are taken out of con context, but you can envision that if they are pointing to a specific sentence, paragraph, or section of the literature review article, the author would understand the reviewer. The purpose of this study, as it relates to the previously mentioned one, is not clear. In this case, the reviewer is confused as to the relationship between two different studies the author mentions, or why the author included the second study. It is unclear whether you agree with the researcher's conclusions. If you do not, consider clearly stating your own interpretation of the results. This comment is likely found in the discussion section of the literature review article. Do the researchers have an explanation for why the amino acid sequence of HDAC10B was shorter than predicted? This is a comment I received on a peer review article that I submitted. The reviewer, rightfully so, thought that I'd left out an important explanation regarding my findings. You will want to identify what needs polishing. Sometimes, despite an author's best effort, material is not presented in the best way. Again, detailed comments go a long way in helping the author. These example comments are specific enough if they are inserted near the text in question. This is an awkward sentence. Notice you don't have to suggest how to fix it, just that it needs to be fixed. The transition between these two paragraphs doesn't work. Same idea here, point out what needs polishing and why. The figure and the legend make sense and are consistent with each other, but the associated text is confusing. Particularly difficult is this sentence, which has a grammatical and punctuation error. This example is from another peer review manuscript that I was an author on. Oops, we goofed big time. The sentence was awkward and contained two fatal errors. Notice the reviewer is honest, but not condescending. 
The previous slides have given you some general advice on how to review your colleagues' work. For class next week, we will use a grading rubric to help you focus your reviewing efforts. I will use the same rubric to grade your literature review article when you turn it in to me. So you can see that there is a benefit to incorporating reviewers' advice. There are three main parts to the rubric. Format, content, and sources. Format includes things like grammar, spelling, and organization. Things found on the fatal errors list. Content asks you to focus on clarity, whether the literature review article contains new knowledge, that is recent knowledge, and if the information is adequately discussed. Finally, the purpose of the sources section is to ensure that the author has used at least six peer-reviewed articles, has cited them correctly, and has not plagiarized. The grading rubric I just talked about is available on Blackboard. To find it, click on the Literature Review Article button. I encourage you to use it to assess your own drafts. You will also find the deadlines and instructions on how to submit your Literature Review Article on Blackboard. Just click on the Literature Review Article button. Please be sure to follow the directions. As always, I think it's a good idea to have a backup copy of your final draft. So please bring in an electronic copy with you to class. This can be on a USB drive or the ASUP drive. Keep up the good work and come see me or email, phone, or Skype me for help.